Hi, I'm Wesley. Welcome to day four of International Zine Month. I am filming this on day three, <laughs> and it has been raining and foggy and just really nice outside all day. I've been sort of waiting for the rain to let up so that I could film without background noise, but it doesn't look like it's going to be letting up. The official prompt for today is Amerazine Day. Explore Marginalized Voices in the Americas. Buy, share, and read zines about racial justice and zines written by by POC, Black, Indigenous, and People of Color from the Americas. So as part of my job with the Watertown Free Public Library, I have had the great fortune of building their social justice zines collection for their upcoming zine library. So I have been knee-deep in social justice and racial justice zines and I have thoroughly enjoyed being able to go through all of them and build a very substantial collection. So at some point, um, I have a video planned and scheduled for later that will be going more in depth onto social justice scenes that you can read for free. And of course, a lot of those will have to do with racial justice and amplifying marginalized voices. So instead for today, I want to focus really more deeply on one particular zine that I love very much. Um, and this one is White Dad's Zine. I have number two. And this is a zine that is a compilation um, written by people of color who were raised by white dads. The reason that I wanted to choose this zine in particular to focus on was because when I think of July 4th, I think a lot about my dad. And I loved my dad unequivocally, and we were so similar in so many ways. And it really pains me to say that the one place that we were not exactly the same was in the sense of patriotism and, um, and thoughts on America that sort of extended into thoughts on the military and, of course, thoughts on 4th of July. Um, my dad was a veteran of the U.S. Navy, and the way that I see it, he kind of joined the Navy as a way of escaping his abusive father and his abusive situation, and that worked well for him, but I, um, I think he ended up with a few viewpoints and a few beliefs about America that were not as critical as I think they should have been. So this zine in particular, I feel like it sort of reminds me of that one aspect of my relationship with my dad that frankly, I don't like thinking about because I don't like this idea that we are so different in this regard. And he died when I was 18 and it was and is completely devastating for me because he was really my best friend. He was my protector and I, you know, it's been almost seven years now that I've been without him and it has been still really, really hard. So I think it's kind of painful for me sometimes on more um, patriotic days like July 4th in America, you know, American patriotic days, like July 4th, like Memorial Day, like Veterans Day and that sort of thing, because I am very anti-patriotic it's at least in the context of America. I think that America is, it is not a morally sound country in a lot of ways. It has so many problems and I don't think that it's unsalvageable necessarily, but you know, it was born out of colonization and it, rests on the blood of so many communities that it is really it makes me sick to 
see levels of patriotism and, you know, see the American flag places and just see July 4th as being the celebration of what I think is a pretty fucked up country. Um, so what is difficult for me is that is something, that is the one thing that my dad and I really disagreed on. And because I was still a teenager and I was still younger at the time, it didn't come up very much while he was alive. Um, and it's, although I know that I am moving in the right direction and I really, you know, I'm not going to give up critical thinking and, and challenging harmful systems or anything, it is really tragic to me to, um, sort of be reminded of that and have that, have that come to the forefront that this is where my dad and I would differ so much. And this is where I am departing from my dad. Um, because I kind of don't want to depart from my dad and I do idealize him in a lot of ways. And this just sort of forces me to look at him for who he really was, which is a flawed human being. And that's hard sometimes because it's sort of like the glass is shattering or or the rose-colored glasses come off in some ways and you have to recognize a lot of problematic behaviors and problematic viewpoints. So I realized that was a bit of a tangent. <laughs> this, all of this is, is something that I really appreciate about this particular zine, White Dads, because these are these I guess these are just the sort of things that that I think about when I'm thinking about my dad in relation to my own life and especially on July 4th. This zine obviously it's coming from a very different perspective and it's coming from a very different experience of people of color who experienced who grew up with a father who did not share their experience and did not understand their experience and in many cases um were racist towards their own child and so this is from the perspective of the of the children of how that actually affected them and you know i think it's it's really um it's tragic and it's um, it's raw, I guess, to read about these experiences that children have had experiencing racism from one of their parents. I mean, I, I, I smiled sort sort of just it, out of like, I don't, I, cause I don't know what else to do. Do you know what I mean? The first story is probably one of my favorites and it is titled Black Jews for Black Jesus by Sarah Grace and um, Sarah Grace grew up with a Jewish, a white Jewish father um, and a black Christian mother and so here's the here's the story it says or, or here, here's one quote from the from the end of the story Back when I sang Twinkle Twinkle for my grandma's church on an unpaved road one Easter in Florida, I didn't do it because the spirit moved me. I didn't do it in celebration or in praise. I did it because I liked to sing, and I did it for my family. I wanted to be a part of the day and to make them proud. I've never doubted that I should have. I've always been glad I sang. Something rose in me. Looking into the pews, I was met with a rainbow of more black and brown faces than I'd probably ever been enveloped by at that point in my life. I saw my grandma in the crowd. I'm sure my small voice quavered, but still, I sang, clutching tight to the microphone and wearing the powder blue dress my Jewish grandmother had given me last Hanukkah. Grandma Molly beamed. I just, <laughs> I really, I really like that story. I think it's very beautiful. Another one, a few lines from this poem, Girl Hero, by Elizabeth Chio. You're exotic looking, my dad informs me. He told me that when he met me, my mom said. That is considered offensive, I say. I feel my mom nodding. He's hurt. I meant that as a compliment. It's always about him. Another one, 
another another few lines from this poem, uh, My White Dad by October Jones. My white dad doesn't understand that you can't run fingers through curly hair. Not everything you see is yours to touch. Here's a line from Of Many Races by Isis Nelson. To be multiracial in America is to be split. When you're half white and half black, self-identity is difficult. One part the oppressor, one part the oppressed. Another is Dear Dad by Zoe Lahua Molers. The protection of family millennia dead, the pride of a people who have yet to be defeated, the place in the middle Kumuhina speaks of for those of us who can't fit into the binary your world forces on us. And Dad, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but when you keep insisting that if the U.S. hadn't taken over Hawaii, someone else would have, in front of your Hawaiian Chinese wife, I feel a fire in my heart that can only come from my mother's people. And there are many more amazing stories, amazing poems in this zine from amazing people. <laughs> so I highly recommend picking this up. I think it is a beautiful zine that fits absolutely perfectly for not only the Amerazine prompt, but just for some of the thoughts and feelings that I often have to grapple with around July 4th. So thank you very much to everybody who wrote something for this zine. I treasure it very dearly. And the free zine that I have to show off today is titled Everyone Calls Themselves an Ally Until It Is Time to Do Some Real Ally Shit by Ancestral Pride. And this was based in the Nucha North Territory in the Pacific Northwest. This is a really excellent zine that is basically calling out white people who will say stuff like, how can I help or what can I do? Or who are approaching indigenous communities and members of indigenous communities from a place of white guilt and wanting to absolve themselves of white guilt, as opposed to actually being there as allies for the community. And so it talks a little bit about what the difference between those two things is and the sorts of things that indigenous communities actually need white people to do, which is first and foremost, f f first, first and foremost, calling out other white people, calling out racism that they, that they see and experience and generally transferring resources to indigenous communities because that, that is what you can do. Um, and those are things that you can do that, are actually appreciated that are not about relieving your white guilt and that are not about speaking over uh, indigenous voices. So I really highly recommend this zine. I know that Ancestor Pride has a couple other free zines that you can read. Um, I'll go ahead and link to Ancestor Pride and to this zine in the description below. Highly recommend reading it. Thanks so much for being here while I talk about some uh, kind of heavy stuff compared to what I often talk about. I hope that you have a great day wherever you are, and I will see you tomorrow for day five. Bye.